went into face mode. Wow, why is that so dark? Yes.
Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Excuse me, I just need to cut this off. God called them both Adam in the day that they were created. Maybe everybody decided to go to church but you today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. I know everyone did not go to church. Hallelujah. Father, we come right now in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, I bless your name today. God, I thank you for this day, oh God. I thank you for waking me up this morning, oh God, in a sound mind, oh God. I thank you, oh God, for giving me peace and joy in my heart and my mind that surpasses understanding. God, I thank you for your grace, God, because your grace is sufficient for every need. I thank you for your mercy, oh God, because your mercy endures throughout all generations. God, I thank you for this day, oh God, that we celebrate is Palm Sunday, God. We thank you, oh God, for your dear son. We thank you, Father, for you because all good things came from you, oh God, in the name of Yeshua. God, I bless you and I bless your son because your word says, He that honored the Father should honor the Son. He that dishonored the Son is dishonoring the Father. So, God, I give you both honor in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. God, I ask you to bless every church that open in your name, O oh God, that you bless every church that's open, O oh God, that bring forth your word, bring forth your truth, O oh God, 
in the name of Yeshua. God, move by your spirit throughout this whole nation, O God, in the name of Yeshua. Draw today, O God, because Yeshua says no one can come unto him except you do the drawing. So God, draw by your power in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. God, I pray for Ukraine that you continue to bless them, O God, in the name of Yeshua, God, that you would move that evil away from them, O God, that you would destroy the evil, Father, in the name of Yeshua. If they refuse to repent, God, bring them down in the name of Yeshua. God, I invite the Holy Ghost here today, no matter what plan I have, God, you move by your spirit, God. You put a word of wisdom, of knowledge, and understanding, and a now word in my mouth, oh God, in the name of Yeshua, that you will be glorified, that you will be edified, oh God, and that the body will be built up in the name of Yeshua. God, if anyone is sick among us, God, I curse sickness in the name of Yeshua. Send it back to the pits of hell from which it came. God, if anybody is afflicted by the adversary, God, we ask you to give them peace in their hearts and their mind that surpasses their own understanding that they will use your word to cast out every demonic force in the name of Yeshua. God, I bless you and I praise you and I love you and I love your son in the name of Yeshua. I give you both praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you once again for joining me. I pray the word of God would be a blessing uh, to you today and anyone that's listening and anyone that would will come later. Uh, some of the things we will cover today for have a blessed Palm Sunday. What is Palm Sunday and why do we celebrate it? The wedding feast of the Lamb. Three testimonies. Testimony of John, testimony of works, and testimony of the Father. What is Palm Sunday and why, should I say, do we celebrate it? What is Palm Sunday? Why do we celebrate it? Well, I remember, well let me read this. I got, actually got it off the internet and I kind of rephrased it a little bit. Palm Sunday is a celebration for honoring Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ's victorious entry into Jerusalem. While this was a joyful, special occasion for his followers, this event took place toward the end of his days on earth before being crucified. Well, we know we celebrate Palm Sunday right before it leads us into the Sunday that we call Easter. Well, on earlier this week, I said, okay, Lord, you know, Easter is coming up next Sunday. What do you want me to teach? And I'm one that like to be led by the Spirit. So I go back and start working on the message that we uh, teach on this Sunday called Easter. And I explain all of that next week if it be the Lord's will. Then he took me back like, no, that's not where I want you. I want you to continue with the teaching that you are teaching. And what's so amazing, where we've been teaching out of Revelation chapter 1, John chapter 1, and uh, using some other scriptures as well, that's going to bring us back into this message like Palm Sunday. And so what they had on the internet again is what I read, but I also rephrased that. And so I remember years ago when I was living in New York. Hi, William. Good to see you. When I was living in New York, and every Palm Sunday, they would give us Palm. And tell us, put it in your wallet, and you would never go broke. But someone said that. I don't know exactly if it was the pastor or someone else. I can't remember. <clears throat> but I put this Palm Sunday in my purse. And I kept that Palm Sunday, uh, not Palm Sunday, I'm sorry, of uh, the Palm. I kept this Palm in my wallet for years. So when I went to Waco, it had dried up. <clears throat> it was nothing really there. So on Palm Sunday, when I went to church in Waco, I said, boy, I sure hope they give us Palm. So I can put some more back in my pocket, uh, my wallet, because I never did go broke. I always had at least a dollar in my purse, so I never did go broke. And so 
they did not have palm. I went to other churches. They did not have pump. Praise God they did not because we get caught up with these myths and we believe these things. Keep pump Sunday in your, I mean, keep palm in your wallet and you would never go broke. So we, we get attached to things like that and we should not. So I was thinking uh, this morning, like, thank you, Lord, that palm dried up and I never found any more because I was believing that myth that if you put it in your wallet, you would never go broke. Praise God. So some of these things, we just need to what? Let them go. So read this again. Palm Sunday is a celebration for honoring Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, victorious entry into Jerusalem. While this was a joyful special occasion for his followers, this event took place toward the end of his days on earth before being crucified. So if the Lord's will, I'll bring forth that message concerning Easter on next Sunday, if it be the Lord's will. Because if he tell me that's not it, I don't want you to be there, go someplace else, I will obey the Spirit of God. So again, we are continuing in Revelation chapter 1 and John chapter 1. These are references to these chapters. The wedding feast of the Lamb. The wedding feast of the Lamb. And so this morning, he gave me this. Do you have a seat at the table? Because there is a wedding feast of the Lamb. But do we have our seat at the table? Matthew 22, verse 2 and 3. This is uh, one of the references that we left off on last Monday night. Because we've been in this teaching now for probably over a month. So again, I'm reading Matthew 22, verses 2 and 3 from the Complete Jewish Bible. The king, And this is Yahshua's teaching. The kingdom of the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding feast for his son. But when he sent his slave to some of the invited guests to the wedding, they refused to come. Well, that reminds me what well, one translation said when he invited them to come, they was unworthy to come, showing us we can be worthy or we could be what you call unworthy. So although the wedding feast is ready, but are we ready to receive it or we do not want to go and we because we just refuse to come. Other words goes right back to for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hi Mary, you said no sound. Well, let me check to make sure my volume is not all the way down. I did not check the volume. Hold on a second. I don't know if it's me or you. Well, the volume is all the way up. Check your phone and make sure uh, whatever you're on, you're not on mute because my volume is all the way, I mean, all the way up. Can anybody else hear me? I don't think it's on my end, yeah. And so anyway, so the wedding feast, it takes me back to uh, the book of Psalms where uh, he had prepared a table before me. Although the table is prepared for me before the foundation of the world, am I worthy to sit at the table? Or do I just refuse to sit at the table? Matthew 22 and verse 8. And usually I go through these steps when I come on. So let me go ahead and do this uh, really fast, should I say. First of all, you cannot be adopted into the family of God unless you're justified by your faith. The same way your father Abraham was justified, you're justified the same way. If we believe on God and believe that God raised your children, Messiah, his son from the dead, we're justified by faith and it's credit to our account 
for righteousness. Then the Bible teaches us we're to confess that which we believe. You go to Romans chapter 10, 9 through 10, and we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, the Lord Yeshua, and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved, but out of the heart man believeth, man continues to believe unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. When you go to Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You go to Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, he that continue to believe, and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. You go to 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses and forsakes his sins shall have mercy, but he that confesses and forsakes not his sins will not prosper. Why do I go through that? Because we can have new people on here. And we may have some people that have not been justified by their faith. They do not know how to get in the family of God. They have been taught one way that's not according to God's way. Because there is one way. You must be justified before you can be adopted out of the world into the family of God. And that show us life is a process. So those are steps that we need to take. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that do, does not continue to believe will be damned. Hallelujah. Now back to the message. I just want to make sure I cover that. So again, we're reading Matthew 22, verse 8, and I am reading from the Complete Jewish Bible and sometime from a different translation. I'll let you know. Then he said to his slave, well, the wedding feast is ready, but the one who were invited didn't deserve it. So showing you could be in Matthew chapter 22 and verse 2, it said they refused. But when you go to Matthew 22 and 8, it said, then he said to his slave, well, the wedding feast is ready, but the ones who were invited didn't deserve it. Well, you go right back. I'm not going to cover that now, but you go back and you look at the five virgins. Uh, all of them was invited to take their lamps, take their oil, but some took it, and, 10 versions. Some took it, some did not. And so that show us, it's, the wedding feast is ready. God prepared it, prepared it before the foundation of the world, but some people just do not deserve it, or they just refuse to go. Matthew 22 and 8. I'm reading from the AMP now. The first one, Complete Jewish Bible. Then he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready. But those who were invited were not worthy. So you notice one would say they didn't deserve it. Well, the other one say worthy. Both of them are the same thing. Unworthy or just did not deserve it. Matthew 25, 10. <coughs> Matthew 25, 10. But as they were going off to buy, the bridegroom came. Those who was ready went with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Well, that goes back to those 10 versions where fire was foolish and fire was wise. Wow. Post some verses on Facebook yesterday about why I do what I do. And I did not remember this verse is in today's message. So here is what I post on Facebook. Because God is so amazing. Sometimes he'll give me something that I'm not even aware it's going to come back up in the teaching. So on yesterday I posted, those who have done what God wants, they are the ones that are going to be worthy to sit at the table. Those who have done what God wants. Not what we want, but what God wants. And I post this yesterday, so I'm going to read it. Get out there on Facebook. The reason I do what is commanded of me from the Messiah is in Matthew 25, 33, 46. After COVID shut down, praise the Lord, back into senior living home, soon for service in the prison. My heartbeat became of Matthew, became, I got, of, yeah, became of, it actually became from Matthew 25, 32 through 46. So I'm going to read it because it's so important. Go right back 
to being worthy to sit at the table. So in verse 33 in Matthew, I think I'm reading from the complete Jewish Bible. The sheep he will place at his right hand, this is Yeshua teaching, and the goat at his left. Then the king, because he's king of king and lord of lords. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come ye whom my father has blessed. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Showing us again, it is prepared for us of the father from the foundation of the world. In other words, the table is set. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you made me your guest. I needed clothes, and you provided them. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the people who have done what God wants will reply. Notice, this is what God wants. So the people who have done it, what God wants will reply. Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and made you our guests? Or needing clothes and provided them. When did you see, when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? The king would say to them, Yes, I tell you that whenever you did these things for one of the least important of these brothers of mine, you did them for me. So many years ago, before I started doing jail ministry, nursing home ministry, and when we would fill out the application, they would ask, why you want to do this? Or why you want to do this work? And I always use these scriptures. I do it as I'm doing it unto the Lord. Because when you do things as you're doing them unto the Lord, you will not give up. But if you do things as you're doing it for man to get a pat on the back to for man to glorify you, you have your reward. And you will not last very long. Because so many times there are ministries doing things and they want to be glorified all the time for doing them. In other words, you want praises for men. Remember, we can look for the praises of God or praises of men. Actually, I post those scriptures out there this week too, where people love the praises of men more than the praises of God. So in 41, then he will also speak to those on his left. I always say that's the wrong side to be on. Saying, get away from me. You who are cursed, go off into the fire prepared for the adversary and his angels. Now I want you to watch something. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. Thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. A stranger and you did not welcome me. Needing clothes and you did not give them to me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they too will reply. Lord. That's what you take your your uh you take notice on. Lord, because no one can call me Lord except by the Holy Ghost, the Ruesh Harkoch. So they are calling him Lord. Remember what he said? Many were saying that day, Lord, Lord, have I not done these different things? And I will say, Depart from me, ye who work iniquity, meaning lawless. Now notice what they say. Then they too will reply. Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, a stranger, needing clothes, sick, or in prison, and not take care of you? And he will answer them, yes, I tell you that whenever you refuse to do it for the least important of these people, you refuse to do it for me. 
other words, it did not say that they couldn't do it. It said they just refused to do it. Because many times we can do things as we're doing it unto the Lord, but sometimes we just refuse to do it. People would say, well, I know I'm supposed to help other people, but let people help themselves. Some people would say, I know I should be going, uh, doing things uh, in the nursing home or the jails or street ministry or in church or whatever, but I'm too busy. Let somebody else do it. Not they, that they didn't have the time to do it. They just refused to do it. Now notice what's going to happen to these that call him Lord as well. 46. They will go off to eternal punishment. But those who have done what God wants will go to eternal life. Notice Yeshua did not say those who have done what I want. Because he did not come to do what he wanted. He came to do what God wanted. To do the will of his father. So read this again. They will go off to eternal punishment. Punishment, either way, is going to be eternal. But those who have done what God wants will go to eternal life. Well, how many people are telling us we don't need to do anything? That's why if we're not doing anything for the Lord, because that's the only thing that's going to last, we're going to go off someplace, but it will be eternal punishment. Remember in verse 34, they called him Lord, 1 Corinthians 12 and 3. Complete Jewish Bible said, Therefore, I want to make it clear to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, Yahshua is cursed. And no one can say, Yahshua, meaning Jesus, is Lord, except by the Ruash Harkosht, meaning Holy Ghost. So if anybody calling Yeshua Lord, saying that he is Lord, they have the Holy Ghost according to the word of God. Because you can't call him Lord except by the Holy Ghost. The Ruach Harkosh, uh, verse number 46. They will go off to eternal punishment, but those who have done what God wants will go to eternal life. Whoever does what my Father in heaven wants. That's in Matthew chapter 12, read 48 through 50. Also in Mark chapter 3, 32 through 35. Reading Matthew 12, 48 through 50. I had no idea I would go here until yesterday the Lord took me here. But to the one who had informed him, he replied, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said. Look, here are my mother and my brothers. Notice he did not say my father. He said, here are my mother and my brothers. AMP says, his disciples and all his other followers. He said that too. Complete Jewish Bible 50. Whoever does what my Father in heaven wants, that person is my brother and sister and mother. He never used the word father, but he used the person that does what he his father wants. That person is his brother, his sister, and mother. Matthew 22, 2 and 3 again. The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding feast for his son. But when he sent his slave to summon the invited guests to the wedding, they refused to come. 22.8. Then he said to his slave, well, the wedding feast is ready, but the one who were invited didn't deserve it. I'm going fast because I read it before, bringing us back into the teaching. Uh, 22 and 8, Matthew. Then he said to the servant, the wedding feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. 25, 10. But as they were going off to buy, the bridegroom came. Yeshua's the bridegroom. Those who was ready went with him to the wedding feast, and the door was shut. Revelation 19, 10. This is where we're picking back up on last week teaching. I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said, don't do that. 
I'm only a fellow servant with you and your brothers, which mean brothers and sisters, who have the testimony of Yeshua. Worship God. For the testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. And I love that scripture because we think of different testimony, how we overcome. The testimony of Yeshua, that's the testimony that they overcame with. The testimony of Yeshua is the spirit of prophecy. Uh, 11, still in Revelation 19. Next, I saw heaven open. Well, Monday night, we went through many scriptures where people saw heaven open, where John saw heaven open, where Nathaniel saw heaven open, where Yeshua saw heaven open. So this is why we're picking up on this verse. Next, I saw, I saw heaven open, and there before me was a white horse. Sitting on it was the one called Faithful and True. Who is called Faithful and True? Yeshua the Messiah. And it is in righteousness that he passes judgment and goes to battle. Other words, Yeshua is the one that judge righteously. And he is faithful, he's true, and he is now judging the world. Remember what we said. Find me testing how genuine our faith is. So here you see he's going to fight with the sword of his mouth. Where the word of God is like what? A two-edged sword. So he's fighting some people with his word. Verse number 12. His eyes, oops, his eyes was like a fiery flame, and on his head were many royal crowns. And he had a name written, which no one knew but himself. He was wearing a robe that had been soaked in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. Well, that's why he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God. So it was written on his thigh, the word of God. The army of heaven clothed in fine linen. Well, remember the Bible said fine linen is the righteousness of the saint. So the armies of heaven, because God's army in heaven, the armies of heaven clothed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him, following Yeshua, on white horses. Well, remember, he was sitting on a horse. And out of his mouth, I didn't realize that was the next verse. And out of his mouth come a sharp sword with which to strike down nations. He will rule them with a staff of iron. I think you also find that particular uh, verse, like in Isaiah, I'm thinking, don't quote me, but it's in there someplace else. It is he who treads the winepress from which floweth the wine of the fury rage of Adonai God of heaven's army. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written. So this is where you're going to see on his thigh. King of kings and Lord of lords. Well, why does it say king of kings and Lord of lords? Because there are, and even today, many kings. There are people who call themselves Lord. But back in biblical time, there was many kings. All the way back, King David, King Solomon, uh, so many different kings. King, uh, I mean, so many different kings, but he kings of all of those kings. And Lord of Lords, because there was many Lord, as Jacob called uh, Esau Lord, Esau called Jacob Lord, uh, Abraham's wife Sarah called Abraham Lord. So there are many Lords. So that's why I said King of King and Lord of Lords. But notice what it did not say God of Gods. No, because he King of Kings and he Lord of of all the other lords. That's why the Bible says there are many lords in heaven. There are many so-called gods in heaven, but there are one true God and there's one true Lord. 
John bore witness to the word of God. Well, when we started this study in uh, John chapter uh, Revelation 1 and John chapter 1, we had noticed John had the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah and the word of God. And he bare witness to everything that he saw. So here again, John bore witness to the word of God and the testimony of Yeshua Jesus, the Messiah Christ. That's Revelation again, 1, 2. Which showing us when we see things, we become witness to those things. Or we should <laughs> become witness to those things. If you can read the Bible... And you understand what you're reading. Don't be like the unit. I understand. How can I understand except someone teach me? So, yeah, it's okay to be taught. But there come a time where we study the Bible and let the Spirit of God teach us. Because the Spirit of God is the best teacher. And so, once we're taught the Word of God, we are to become witnesses to it. Now, it was so amazing to me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. How, you know, we we have watched the Passion of the Christ so many times. And I remember when I was in Texas, we would show it like on Easter Sunday. Or the Saturday, I think we would actually show it. And I rented a, a big screen TV, brought it outside. So when whoever uh, wanted to, they could come and watch TV. Gabe, we were handing out popcorn. And of course, we always fed on Saturday as well that for whoever came. And so what we did, because it was in Hebrew, he didn't want it to change it from the original text. I don't know if it's in English today or not, or it's just still in Hebrew. <clears throat> so what we would do, we would actually read it to people. Uh, so they would try to read everything on the screen. We would ask, take turn and we would actually read it. And if a person really even watch that video and read it or have someone to read it as, you know, it's showing if it's not in English or whatever, Spanish or whatever, I can't see how people can't come out with a good revelation, even just watching that movie. Because that movie is so clear and it explained the scripture. Even when I went to see the movie in the in the uh, in the theater, I could read it and I could relate to everything they were showing. You know why? Because the Lord had taught me that in his word. I had studied that word. So if we study the word of God and we know the word of God, we can just watch the scenes without even reading all of that. And we can understand that this is exactly what is written down in the word of God. And so many times people are teaching things that's not written down, but yet they watch the movie and they still come out with a bad understanding. I don't understand that. Well, we know, it kind of reminds me when Yeshua rose from the dead and, and and some people said, did our hearts burn when he explained the scripture? Well, they didn't have no understanding until he actually explained the scriptures and he opened up their understanding so they could understand. And so I pray this year if we do not understand and cannot see clearly that God opened up our spiritual eyes and opened up our understanding, that we not only just hear, but we are able to see. That's why Job said, I heard of thee by the ears, but now my eyes see thee. Hallelujah. So again, John bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Yeshua Jesus, the Messiah Christ. People of God. We need to be more concerned about our family than anyone else. I have said this before. So if you can understand the word of God, please share it with your family. Uh, people tell you, I am so concerned about my family more than anything. Sometimes I say, well, you know, sometimes they come, sometimes they don't. Maybe I shouldn't even bother anymore. 
But then there are other people will come also. So I'm concerned about everybody. I'm concerned about all souls. That's why the Bible says, he that saved his souls is wise. That's why I say, this is why I do what I do. I don't do it as I'm doing it unto people. I do it as I'm doing it unto the Lord. This is why I do not teach what people want me to teach. I do it as I'm doing it unto the Lord. Kind of reminds me last Wednesday, I actually started back in one of the uh, retirement homes. They called me and I started back Wednesday. So as I'm teaching and everything, uh, one of the ladies, she had told me, you know, she was a teacher and everything. So as I'm um, teaching, so she made a statement. And I said, I, uh, and I looked at her and I said, I'll cover that issue later. But the Lord would not <laughs> let me just say, do it later because I might not see her later and she might not see me later. So I had to explain it at that time. And so when I got ready to leave, one of the, I don't know if he was a visitor or what, but he said, ma'am, you are so good. I said, no, he's good. And that's why I tell people, I do not teach. I allow the spirit of God to teach for me. I know nothing on my own. That's why I stay with what is written down in the scriptures. And that's why if someone go away from what is written down in scripture, I will not receive it. Because I know who taught me. And that's why Paul, the Bible says, you know who taught you. I know who taught me. The Lord taught me. And he is the best teacher. So how do you allow the Lord to teach you? Remember Mary? She was sick. At the Lord's feet. In other words, she's listening to him. He's teaching her. As the table is prepared for you, now you come and take your seat. She's sitting there listening to him where Martha was concerned about a lot of other things. In other words, I'm concerned about a lot of things as well. But my main concern is about the word of God and trying to help other people. Like I play guitar. But there's not a day that I do not study the Word of God. Sometimes I say, why don't you just, you know, practice and then you do it later. And then I go, okay, if I'm pra I can go ahead and practice because I know I'm going to do it later. And so sometimes my spirit said, well, I'll do it first. And I do it the way the Spirit tells me to do it because I know how important the Word of God is. I know the Word of God is powerful. I know the Word of God blesses me. I know the Word of God will bless other people. If they just read it, study it, it will bless them. That's why no matter what you're going through, there's a word in God's word for that situation. There's always a word. Like I said, if I get this uh, courage for just a little while. God always give me a word to build me up. That's why he tell us, build up the house of God. In other words, use the word of God, build them up. The word of God is to build us up, not to tear us down, but sometimes it feels like it's tearing us down. No, it's building us up, trying to get some stuff out of us so we are end up in a better place. Trying to get some stuff out of us so we can be healed, but because of sin in our lives many times that hinder our healing whether we believe it or not it hinder our peace whether we believe it or not it hinder our joy whether we believe it or not that's why the joy come from the Lord that's why I do not need people to make me happy I am happy already I don't need anything to bring joy into my heart the Lord is my joy this joy I give you man can't take it away this peace I give you man can't take it away so there's peace there's joy there's hope there's deliverance in the word of God so I hope your table is set and you are sitting there listening to the word of God. Many people are going to show up in church today. Probably haven't been there all year. Many people probably show up. If not today, they'll show up Sunday. I remember years ago, I would say, this is a good day to stay home. 
Let all those other believer, unbelievers show up in church because you won't see them for another year. And when people show up like that, people need to give them a word to bring forth deliverance, not give them a word to cry a little bit and go right back and do the same thing they was doing before. Hallelujah. That was the Holy Ghost. Didn't know I was going there. Hallelujah. John bore witness to the word of God and the testimony of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, Christ. Uh, Revelation 1-2. Uh, John 5, 3, one of my favorite chapters. Go right back with this teaching. You have sent to John, and he has testified to the truth. Other words, you're going to testify to something. Make sure you're testifying to the truth, not to a lie or deception, which lies is deception. Make sure you're testifying to the truth. 34. Not that I collect human testimony, although John is testifying of the truth, but I don't collect human testimony. Rather, I say the thing so that you might be saved. In other words, he's saying is that they might be saved. He was a lamp burning and shining, so he was a light. That's why he said we're to be the light of the world, not darkness to the world. He was a lamp burning and shining. And for a little while, you were willing to bask in his light. Do you know people go to church, maybe on Easter Sunday, and they are willing for a little while to rejoice in a word. They are willing for a little while to try to obey what they heard. But it only lasts many times just for a little while. You know why? They have no watering of the word to keep that word growing in their hearts. Verse 36. But I have a testimony. This is Yeshua the Messiah. But I have a testimony that is greater than John. See, I have a testimony greater than many people. Greater than John. For the things, notice plural, not thing. For the things my father has given me to do, the very things I'm doing now, testify on my behalf that the father has sent me. Other words, God didn't give him a thing to do. God gave him things to do. That's why people have these, uh, have these bulletin board, it's finished. But many times they don't understand what was finished. See, Yahshua had a lot of things that God gave him to do. Not just one thing, as he gave me many things to do. Not just one thing. And so he had things to do. But there were certain things he would complete as he was going forward. But even when he died on the cross and God took him back to heaven, he didn't stay there. He had another thing to do. God sent him back to the earth to keep teaching his followers the way. So he finished that portion of what God had gave him to do. That was just a thing God gave him to do. But God gave him much more to do. Other words, as we think, just because we have received the Messiah, that's the only thing we need to do. We are walking in darkness because that only get you into a race to continue to do the things that is required of the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 37. In additional, the father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. But you have neither heard his voice or seen his shape. Sometimes I wonder if people study these chapters where someone going to be teaching lies and deception on Sunday. Someone is teaching lies and deception many Sundays because they are saying one thing that the word of God never said. We'll get into that when the Lord tell me again. 
Notice it again. In additional, those are three witnesses, people. John, works, and the Father. The three different witnesses. Everything is established by three witnesses all the way back from the foundation of the world. Those are three witnesses. That's why the Bible said two or more witnesses. So here we have three. We have John. We have the works God gave uh, Yeshua to do. But in addition to those two, he said, in addition, my father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. But you have neither heard his voice or seen his shape. And that's in there more than one time. No one have ever seen God the Father. No one. 38. Moreover, his word does not stay. That's the key word. His word does not stay in you. He didn't say it was never in them. But it didn't stay there. It wasn't abiding there. See, the word of God is to stay. The word of God is to abide. The word of God is to bear fruit. So that's why he said, moreover, his word does not stay. Not that it wasn't there. It does not stay in you. Why? Because you don't trust. That's that key word. You must continue to trust that it was God the Father that sent Yeshua into the world. You must continue to trust that it was God the Father that raised Yeshua the Messiah from the dead. Let me finish the verse. Moreover, his word does not stay in you because you don't trust the one he sent. Proverbs twenty-two nineteen. I want your trust to be in Adonai. This is why I am instructing you about them today. Other words, go all the way back there in the book of Proverbs. I want your trust to be in Adonai. This is why I am instructing you about them today. Other words, our trust. That's what happened with Paul. I keep going back to Paul. Paul trust in Adonai. He trusts in God. And he believed the resurrection of Yeshua the Messiah. We are to trust in God. Remember, trust in God with all your hearts and lean not to your own understanding. So many times people say, this is my understanding. This is my understanding that I receive from another man. No, if anyone like wisdom, let him ask of God. Get God understanding, not man understanding when it does not agree with the word of God. God want to give us his understanding. That's why the Bible said rightly divide the word of truth. Yahshua came to bring forth truth. So many times we will receive what other people said before we receive what Yahshua said and we do not have God, and we do not have Yeshua the Messiah. That's why the Bible said, if you do not receive what the Messiah taught, you don't have both. You don't have God, and you do not have Yeshua the Messiah. That's in First John, I think, chapter 2, don't quote me, in one of those little books. Uh, we're going to stop here on 539. Notice what he said. You keep examining, which means searching, the scriptures, because you think that in it you have eternal life. Those very scriptures that you keep searching bear witness to me, but you won't come to me in order to have life. In other words, you keep searching scriptures, and you think you have life eternal or eternal life, but you don't. I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying this is what he's teaching them. The very scriptures bears witness to me. That's why we are to search the scriptures and let the scriptures bear witness to Yeshua the Messiah. As John did, as the work Yeshua did, but most of all, as the Father did. This is my beloved Son, in who I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Hear ye him. 
it's time to hear the voice of Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, over my voice, over every other voice out there. You want to hear his voice. Remember, it's all the way back in Deuteronomy and also in the book of Acts, where Moses said, God is going to raise up a prophet like unto me. He was speaking about Yeshua. And anyone doesn't hear the voice of this prophet will be cut out from the people. You go right to the book of Acts. God is going to raise up a prophet like unto me. And this time he used souls. And any soul does not hear the voice of this prophet will be cut off from the people. Well, you take a tree. In order to cut someone off, they must be connected. You can't cut a limb from a tree unless the limb was connected to the tree. You just read John 15 and you see that. A limb must be connected to the vine in order to be cut off. And so coming a time, if we're not hearing the voice of Yahshua, the Messiah, we can be cut off, people, whether we believe it or not. The word is sent forth to bless us. The word of truth make us free. The word of lies and deception keep us where we are. Just think, if people would just line up with the word of God, we would be a blessed nation. I mean, we blessed already, but we would be so much more blessed spiritually. We wouldn't be killing. We wouldn't be stealing. We would not be hating. We not be lying. We will not covet. We not. We wouldn't be doing all those things. But we need to line up with what is written down in Scripture. That's why Ben and Pete, many people will go to church and say, the pastor say, why did you come? They say, I came to join the church. Guess what? That's exactly what they did. It doesn't mean they joined Jesus. You're sure? They just joined the church. And they'll say, what? We're going to baptize you on this Sunday. Never ask them what they believe. That's why the Bible said, show us you shouldn't even baptize a person if they do not believe. That's why the unit said, what can hinder me from being baptized? Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, he confessed. He said, I believe that Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, is the Son of God. That's when he was baptized. We are baptizing people and they do not even believe. You're wasting your time. You need to find out what they believe before you baptize them. I would find out what a person believes, teach them scriptures before I even baptize them because I know they are just being going in the water, coming up, going in the water dry, coming up wet. That's it. And so we need to make sure a person believe on God. And believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead so they could be justified by their faith. Then they are to grow in grace. They are to confess that which we believe. As Romans 10, 9 through 10 says, if, that means it's up to us. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts, that God has raised him, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But out of the heart, man believeth. In other words, man continue to believe unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation, unto he is delivered. Then Romans 10 and 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then Mark 16, 16 says, he that believeth, other words, he that continue to believe and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now we tell people you don't need to be baptized because the thieves was never baptized. We don't know that. The Bible said they were thieves. It did not say they was unbelievers. And that's why you go back where you see baptism started back in the book of Exodus. Read 1 Corinthians chapter number 10. It said they were baptized unto Moses under the cloud and in the sea. And that rock that followed them was the Messiah, meaning Christ, showing us Christ was the one that brought them through the wilderness. 
And so we need to search out the scriptures so we can know the scriptures so we can teach people the truth, what is required of them of God. That's why Yeshua was baptized. He never sinned, but he was baptized because it was for them to fulfill all righteousness. So if he was baptized telling us we need to be baptized as well. You are baptized for the dead according to the word of God. Hallelujah. And then you go to 1 John 1 and 9. That's for those of us who are in Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing that we will sin sometime and come short of the glory of God. That's why it says if we confess that means if we agree with God, that sin is sin. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, he cannot forgive us. He cannot clean us if we are never not in him. Even if we are in him, he cannot clean us unless we agree with God that sin is sin. That's why you go to Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses, that means you do the crime, you do the time. He that confesses and forsake his sin, that means repent, shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sin, that means do not repent, will not prosper. God can't forgive us, people, unless we agree with him, unless we agree with him that sin is sin. He can't. Don't let some lying spirit say, all of my sins are forgiven me. Doesn't matter what I do now. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, washed by the blood of the Lamb. No, when you come into the Messiah, all your past sins are forgiven you. Not your future, not your present. You do the, you do the crime, you do the time. That's why the Bible says you have forgotten. That you were purged from your old sin. If you think I'm lying, I don't know what I'm talking about. Just go on a, a website and, and look at past sin. Look at old sin. That means your past sins are forgiven you when you come into Christ. It's just like a newborn baby being born all over again. But now you're in a race. You're in a race. And so now when we sin, we'll agree with God. That's why David said, my sin is always before me. But when you're in Christ, your sin is not before you. They're not behind you. They are not on the side of you. And they are definite, not covered. They are washed away. That's a difference from the old, uh, old covenant and the new covenant. Old covenant, your, your sin was covered from year to year. So your conscience could never be clear. You was always being reminded of your past. And some of us are the same way today. We are always being reminded of our past. Your past is just what it says. Your past. If you have confessed and you have repent, those things are gone. They are your past. The only way they come back is when you go back out there and you do it again. You brought life back to a dead situation. And so that's why the Bible says the blood of Christ cleanses. It doesn't cover. The blood of Christ cleanses us from our sin. And so many people are saying, my sins are covered when I'm in Christ. Praise God, mine is not covered. Because if it covered, they can be uncovered. If I spill something and I just put something over it, it's still there. But what happened when I wash it away? It's no longer there. So my sins are washed away. They are not covered. And I do not cover myself with the blood of Christ because the Bible never told me to do it. Hallelujah. The blood of Christ cleanses me. The power of God keeps me. The Bible teaches us that. Look it up. The power of God is what keeps me. The word of God is power. The word of God is spirit. That's why Yeshua says, be filled with the, the word says, be filled with the spirit. Do you know Yeshua says, my word, they are spirit and they are life. That means the more word I get, the more spirit I get. The more word I get, the longer I'm going to stay alive. So the same way I need physical food to keep my body alive, I need the word of God to keep me alive. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out from the mouth of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you all so much for joining me. I'm not a hard teacher. I just believe in the truth. I love people's souls. I want everybody to go to heaven, and I want them to stay there. 
I want them to enter into the gates. I do not want anybody to go and be cast out because many exalted into heaven shall be cast back down to hell. We always stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Ungodly people will not even be judged. Read Psalms and Psalm chapter 1 in the book of Peter. The ungodly will not even stand in judgment. How? Why? They never enter a race. Nor sinners. Sinners are those in Yeshua the Messiah. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. That's why the Bible said he would take out of his kingdom. You can't take anybody out of his kingdom unless they was once in the kingdom. Correct? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You all be blessed in the name of Yeshua the Messiah. Love you with the love of Yeshua the Messiah. And if you're free, please join us tomorrow night. We will continue in, continue in the book of Revelation, in the book of John, and whatever the Lord takes me. Hallelujah. You all be blessed. Love you.